takes his place. Tom, how are you? Uh, <laughs> what is this thing, and what's going on? Well, um, what's going on? Well, we know the world's gone a little bit crazy, but in motorcycling, we're doing pretty well. You know what I mean? Uh, we've been here 20 years next month, and um, we're still the number one Triumph dealer of all time and the number one Triumph dealer currently in North America, selling motorcycles, riding them, and having fun. One of the original top 100 class of, uh, first year's class, more than 25 years ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I had the, the other location next door where I first opened Southern California Triumph and Off-Road, and it wasn't long before I got tied in with, with Dealer News, of course, and I didn't have any room, so slowly but surely, I just, I had to use every single space that I could, and I think for two years in a row, I got best use of space. We, yeah, News. we appreciated your creativity and your ability to, to make magic out of nothing, um, and then not just with the unit sales, though. You became the, the largest West Coast uh, helmet, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, with the help of Sammy Tanner, of course, and he's, he was a friend of mine uh, previously before I opened anyway. And um, he helped me. We had a, God, I had a whole room full of Arai helmets. And we did, a, we did a whole lot. We were a leading Arai helmet dealer, for sure. And then you branched out, you added Ducati, became the number one Ducati dealer in the country for a time. Yeah, in 2007, and we've uh, been in the top one, two, or three usually bef uh, for all these years. And I, that was well, that was back in 2003 that we added wow. Ducati. Seems I know, like the yesterday. years just fly. Uh, and then more recently, you've added Suzuki, Royal Enfield, right. um, used units. Um, well, we've always had pre-owned. But uh, one of the things, in, and I think you're, I know you're aware of this, that um, each one of my dealerships is set up as a separate franchise. And all that is based around the enthusiast. Because nobody wants to come in, if, if you're a Ducati enthusiast and you come to your Ducati uh, uh, dealer for the first time, you don't want to trip over 15 Triumph 17 Hondas and, and all this to find your beloved Ducatis in the back, about six of them with a few t-shirts. No. And uh, my expectation, the way I've set up every one of my franchises, is if you're an enthusiast of that brand, that when you walk in, your, your legs are going to get weak and you're going to go, oh my God, I never need to go anywhere else again. It's all built around the enthusiast. So each one of my franchises is named differently. Southern California Triumph, Southern California Ducati, Southern California Royal Enfield, Southern California Suzuki, and e all of them collectively fall under the umbrella of Southern California Motorcycles. And now you've branched that out uh, with the giant bicycles. Electric branches. bicycles, yes, indeed. Well, um, this year, Triumph came out with an electric bicycle. Ducati came out with three electric bicycles. Yamaha has an electric bicycle. Um, Harley Davidson spending millions of dollars for their electric bicycle division. And I thought to myself, wow, uh, maybe for one of the first times in business I can be on the tip of the sword. And um, so I uh, got together with the giant people at the Long Beach Motorcycle Show. I saw Eddie Lawson and Eric Bostrom standing there, and both of them I have known for years. And what are you guys doing? Next thing you know, I'm talking to the giant electric bicycle people. And um, we have now opened Southern California Giant Electric Bicycles, and it's a complete and the only one in the United States, an exclusive Giant Electric Bicycle franchise inside of a motorcycle complex. So definitely you are on the, the point of the spear with this next round. Well, I'm hoping, but you know, it's always uh, with the changing of our society and the changing of the buying habits and the changing of the motorcyclist, our, uh, the, the changing of the guard, and I kind of perceive that it happened somewhere around the recession that we had, that the baby boomers, we, I guess, the recession, we officially handed motorcycling over for all intents and purposes to the newer generations. And the newer generations buying habits are diversely different. And even their riding styles and their tastes are different than us baby boomers. Trying to stay, stay ahead of that is a real task on, uh, all, all on its own. If anybody can do it though, you can do it. You've got that <laughs> Midas touch so far. Speaking of Midas touch, this solid gold trophy, just about, uh, this is representative of what? 
Well, we uh, got this for an award for being Dealer of the Year, and I'm pretty sure it was 2016. There again, uh, that sounds weird not knowing what year we <laughs> they were all blend into one. We've been the number one Triumph dealer for so long and the number one Triumph dealer of all time in North America. Uh, they do stack up a little bit, but I, w I won't say without my sincere appreciation to my customer base and to Triumph for, uh, for seeing what we're all about. Okay, so yeah, um, 20 years ago next month, I opened up Southern California Triumph and Off-Road. I had two beta trials bikes because I rode trials back in those days. But I had six Triumphs and some t-shirts and Hector Catamatori, I love him dearly. I didn't have money to put a lot of things on the wall when I first opened, so Hector put a bunch of pictures up so of, of his pictures so the dealership looked really nice. And I had three employees and um, myself. So the first, uh, we opened in April, so the first eight months, uh, we did okay, we got the name out, and we did, 2001 was our first full 12 months in operation. We became the number one Triumph dealer in America. 